Welcome. This is the Big Idea Podcast by NABO, the National Association of Business Owners and Entrepreneurs. My name is Ron Wills, and I'm the founder and president of NABO. NABO focuses on the business community and entrepreneurship and those business owners who are doing the right things and, and building the community and supporting the community. In that, we have uh, Jack Upchurch, who is um, uh, owner of the Edenton Assisted Living Facility in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, welcome, Jack. Hi, Ron. So some time ago, we had you on one of our panels uh, at NABO in one of our presentations. And the presentation was about passion in your business. Uh, and, you know, most people outside, you know, don't run their own business, think that business owners only care about dollars and cents. Can you tell us what role passion has in your business? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, business has to have numbers work. The numbers have to work in business. But it's, it's the passion, a compelling vision for your business. That's really what gets your team motivated. And so that's where I say the passion comes in. Uh, and especially in my business, when your business is caring for people, you have to care about the people. So, you know, when our business was founded uh, by my dad and his business partner, you know, their vision was to not put the numbers first. Um, now, the business partner was a mathematician, so the numbers were there, mm -hmm. but the vision was putting the people first. And then the, the idea was that those people would drive the numbers. And we found that that's how, actually how it works. It, it's uh, in our business. My dad used to say that he wanted to visualize it as a choir made up of singers, all capable of being soloists. And the things that knit them together, they sang together because they believed in the leader and that vision. So without passion, uh, you, you can't get your team members to sing together. And so that's really where I think uh, we, we're different. And, and that's where I think the vision helps. You know that you and, and your team, and, and you give all the credit in the world to your team that runs the facility day in and day out, but your business is Edenton, which is an assisted living and independent living senior community. I usually get that all confused. For our audience, could you explain what is assisted living versus independent living or nursing home for that matter? Yeah, sure. We get these, uh, these terms confused all the time. Um, and so, you know, it boils down really to how much medical care is provided uh, on site. And, and, and it also boils down to how much that level of care costs. So I think I can, I think I can make it somewhat simple to remember. It starts kind of at the top with the hospital and a stay in the hospital might say cost $30,000 a month. You've got doctors running all over the place. You've got equipment everywhere. You've got at pharmacies, you've got therapy, you've got everything right there. And that's $30,000 a month plus. Um, you step down below that level to skilled nursing, which people know as nursing homes. They have fewer doctors, uh, less equipment, and they really focus more on rehab. If you were to stay in a nursing home uh, for a month, that's probably going to cost around $10,000. Right below that is where our business is. It's, it's called assisted living. Assisted living is uh, we have nursing care and personal care, and we have medical and rehab services uh, basically available on, on call, and they come to us, but it's an appointment-based thing. And, and so it's, it's not staff, it's outside people coming in to, to provide the services. That costs about half of what a nursing home costs. So you go from 10,000 down to about 5,000 a month for assisted living. Below that is independent living. And that really isn't even a thing. It's just apartments with services provided. Um, we have part of the rent uh, covers uh, meals, covers uh, security, transportation, those kinds of things. They're built right into the rent, they're included, they're available, and it's convenient for people. So uh, independent living is about half of what assisted living. So you're at the $2,500 level uh, with that. There's a big difference just depending on the level of care that you need. Well, there is, and, and there's also a, a difference in how much freedom, uh, what it feels like to be there. You know, obviously if you're in a hospital, 
you really don't have much freedom. You're hooked up to things and you're, you're in that bed. Nursing home feels the same way. Assisted living starts, starts feeling more like home and it's more, it's more open. And so it, it's all a matter of really what you need and how much, how much medical services you need in particular. Well, I know that Edenton, you, 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 your, your family has run it for 30 years now or overseen it. And you've got great people. I know uh, you always <laughs> brag about your people. And I think that's, that's yeah. wonderful that you do because you really assembled a, a, a terrific team, but you've been in business for 30 years. How has the business changed over the last 30 years? Well, 30 years ago when we opened Edenton, um, there wasn't any such thing as assisted living. So you had hospitals and you had nursing homes. And our idea for Edenton was, was apartments with services uh, to keep people out of nursing homes. We were in the nursing home business, but we also wanted to e experiment with, with providing lesser levels of care to keep people out of nursing homes because nobody really wanted to go to one. So uh, we offered meals, security, transportation, um, and we, we just had apartments and we built a little community. Um, over the years, um, it got more medical as people age, they end up needing more services and more services. So the people we had in our apartments started needing more care and, and it got to be where we needed more than we could do in their apartments. And assisted living as a, as a concept came on, on board there's a license involved. So we started building small communities, uh, neighborhoods, uh, if you will, added buildings to our campus for assisted living. And we built, we converted one of our apartment buildings first as a, as a test and it immediately filled up and it stayed full. And so we said, Oh, this is, this is great. We're filling a need. Um, then we built another one and another one, another one. So over time, we're about half independent living and half assisted living. And they're right on the campus. We we built it as small communities um, where there's a neighborhood. There's there's constant staff, um, and so er everybody knows everybody, and it it doesn't feel like a like a big institution. And it's a it's a safe community as as you get older to be in. It's a, a very safe place. Well, well, say there's a there's the physical piece of of being safe in the sense that it's designed not not to have problems like your, you know, three-story house that you moved out of. We don't have, we don't have tubs that have to be climbed in and out of, and we don't have stairs. So there's that safety factor, but you also have your friends and your extended family around you. So it's, it's a feeling of, of being surrounded by, by familiarity. And I, so I think there's safety on two different levels. Who, who are your customers and where do they come from? Well, we consider the customer to be a family. So you and your, and your mother, you and your father would be our customer. Now, you know, your mother or father would, would actually be the resident that would need some type of assistance, but we're really dealing with, with um, families in crisis most of the time um, that, that have had some, some shock to their system and all of a sudden mom or dad needs more help than they can provide. Uh, you know, for me, it was my, my stepfather's dementia. And, you know, he started talking to me early on and said, you know, um, I'm, I'm confused. And, you know, I'm just, I'm really worried what's going to happen to, to your mother when, when, you know, I can't remember where I am. Uh, uh, Ron, just, you're going to be around people that love you. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Well, seven years later, my mom couldn't manage um, his care. He wanted to be up all night playing card games with her. And then he wanted to catnap all day and she just couldn't keep that up. So my mother and stepfather actually moved into Edenton and we cared for my stepdad until he died. And uh, so that's who our customers are is people that, that end up holding on as long as they can in, in their homes. And then something happens that goes over a line. It it, it is um, something that many of us have, have experienced ourselves. And one of the things that, you know, in my age group, we're, we're, we're still taking care of our parents. And, you know, the, some of the, the stories of we, we're, we're waiting too long. And I, I've shared this with you, and I want to share it with the, uh, the, the NABO community, because I hope it I hope it 
it sounds familiar enough to people who are taking care of elderly ones that are that might urge him to give you a call or some other assisted living facility a, a call before you go through what we went through. So the story is, is it was about my uncle who we took care of and he didn't have a family. So my two older brothers, myself and my younger sister uh, was we were, were taking care of him. And we um, we thought he was, you know, well enough to to manage his home. And um, he was about 85 at the at the time, but he was had that very early onset dementia, but not bad enough. And um, he got very good at hiding his <laughs> dementia. You know what I, you know, he might say something wrong and go, oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. And, and you know, correct. And of course, you know, he didn't want to leave that home, that home he had been in for 40 years and he didn't want to leave it. But we started seeing little problems, you know, food spoilage because the refrigerator door was left open all night. You know, he just walked away from it. Something, you know, like a pot on the stove that was just burned because he forgot that the the stove was on. And we kept telling ourselves, oh, no, no, it's okay. He can, he can handle it. Well, he would tell us that it was okay. He could handle it. And, you know, we knew we were going to have to step in at some point, but you know what? We just, we delayed it. We delayed it. Uh, then we got the call uh, from a local hospital uh, Sibley Hospital in Washington, D.C. And we got a call saying that our un my, uh, my uncle was in severe condition. He's been in a, a terrible automobile accident. And what he did was he got into his car. He thought he was hitting the brake and he hit the accelerator. And he not only destroyed his car, he destroyed two neighbors' cars. And thank God he didn't hit anyone. And, you know, when I told you the story a while back, I, I was thinking, my God, how would I feel today if we would have let that go on? And he might have, if he would have hurt somebody. And so it's, it's tough. And I understand what people go through when you have these mm -hmm. moments. But the, the, the moment that I'll never remember actually came from my mom, who we put in assisted living facility. She didn't want to go. She didn't like the idea. And then we gave her a couple of weeks and we came by and visited her and we took her out to lunch. When we came back from lunch, we went into the front entryway. She turned around and said goodbye because she saw her friends <laughs> sitting in a group in the, in the meeting room. And she was completely comfortable. And from that point on, she is 99 years old. And, you know, up until just the last two or three years, she's been in assisted living. And she had friends and, and just wonderful relationships. Um, so it's, there's a great story there, but there's a story about not waiting too long to at least start the conversation. Uh, because if you do like we did, you don't know what's going to happen to your loved ones. Oh, that's exactly right. I mean, your story is, is typical. Uh, you know, there's no one set of facts, but every family goes through this, this agonizing situation where, you know, you just don't, you're uncomfortable with kind of taking over and making a loved one, you know, do something that, you know, a lot of times they've, they've asked somebody in the family, please don't put me in a nursing home. So you're dealing with that. Um, and you've also got this other notion that, you know, most of us have told our family somewhere along the line, we don't want to become a burden. So we just leave me in my home, I'll take care of myself, and I'm fine. <laughs> like your uncle was was saying, you know, everything's under control even though the, the pot's on fire on the stove. <laughs> yeah. um, but so that is very, very typical. There's no one right answer at all. Um, but, but waiting too long, um, most of the time, my friends, I, I get calls probably three times a week from friends, people that know what business I'm in. And they tell me their stories and they all sound exactly the same, only they haven't yet gotten the call or they're starting to get the call, the calls from the hospital or from the neighbor. You get a call from a neighbor 
and say, you know, so, so-and-so was, was out in the front yard with, with, you know, <laughs> boxer shorts on or something, but um, you know, it, it's, it's some variation of things deteriorating and, and occasionally there's a crisis where you can't avoid it. And other times it's just kind of like the brakes on your car wearing down. You don't really notice them wearing down until all of a sudden you push on the brake and you get that squealing sound. And we're not tuned to hearing those squealing sounds, you know, with, with our loved ones deteriorating. Uh, so that's the situation typically. And, and then we're all in rush mode. We're, we're everybody's scrambling, trying to make something happen quickly. So you know, I, I, I know this case, and I just thought of a, a, a gentleman that you and I both know, uh, who's uh, been, been circling putting his mother in an assisted living facility. And I got the call from him literally in the last two weeks that his mother had left the water running and the house flooded $80,000 oh. worth of oh damage. My. And uh, he finally took action. So, it, it, you know, these are the, we don't mean to be negative about this or, or whatever, just be aware that, you know, the when they do get into the assisted living facility i've never seen any of the people that we've worked with that didn't love it once they were in they just didn't like the idea at first no. and no, uh, no, 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 nobody wants to give something up but but uh, finding new friends i mean who wouldn't want to do that yeah yeah and, so, and always having somebody to talk to just walking out into a gathering area and they can have friends they have people to talk to and so forth well, I want to thank you very much, uh, one, for the, the great work that you all do up at e Edenton. Thank you. And thank you um, for coming on the Nabo's Big Idea podcast today. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.